Welcome to lesson 10, where this is called Fundamental Trigonometric Identities. So first, before we proceed to our lesson, let us have a recall of the domain of certain equations. So take note that the domain of an expression or equation is the set of all real values of the variable for which every term or part of the expression or equation is defined in all real numbers. So, for example, let us find the domain of the following expressions. We have x minus 1, square root of x minus 1, and we have tangent x plus cosine x. So, first, the domain of x minus 1 is the set of all real numbers because there will be no such number in our set of real numbers that will make x minus 1 undefined. So, the domain is the set of all real numbers. For number 2, take note that x or square root of x minus 1 should not be uh, less than 0. So, the radicand or the number inside the square root should not be less than 0 because the square root of a negative number is imaginary. So, x minus 1, which is the radicand of our expression, should not be less than 0 or it should always be greater than 0. Okay, so therefore... We should have x is greater than 1. So, therefore, the domain should be x is greater than 1. Next, we have tangent x plus cosine x. Now, take note the domain should be true to all parts or every term of our expression. So take note that the domain of cosine is all real numbers. However, the domain of tangent is the set of all real numbers except for those which have uh, the degree equal to 90 or other uh, other parts which are multiples of 90 so or coterminal angles of 90 so we could say that the domain of tangent x plus cosine x is all real numbers except pi over 2 plus pi times n because these are numbers which will make tangent x equal to undefined. So, if tangent x will be undefined, the whole expression will also be undefined. So, I hope that uh, you, you now recall the domain of an equation. Let's now proceed to identity and conditional equations. So, an equation is said to be identity if for all values of the variable of the domain of the equation is true. Otherwise, the equation is conditional. So, the domain must be the set of all real numbers for an equation to be an identity equation. If otherwise, then it is a conditional equation. So, we have here some examples. Number 1, we have x squared plus 2x plus 1. That is equal to x plus 1 times x plus 1. Number 2, x plus 1 is equal to 0. Number 3, 1 minus cosine squared theta is equal to sine squared theta. Then, number 4, we have sine theta second theta is equal to tangent theta. Number 1, take note that Take note that for number 1, x plus 1 times x plus 1 is equal to x squared 
plus 2x plus 1, which is equal to the left side of the equation. Since this is equal to the left side of our equation, then this equation will always be true. So we can say that number 1 is an identity equation. Next, for number 2, we have x plus 1 equals 0. Take note that x plus 1 equals 0 will only be true if x is equal to negative 1. Now, since this equation will only be true in some instance and in not in all instances, then we can say that number 2 equation is a conditional equation because it will only be true if x equals negative 1. If x will have a different value, then the equation will not be true. Number 3, we have 1 minus cosine squared theta equals sine squared theta. Take note that for uh, the Pythagorean identities, both of these, okay, the left and the right side of our equation will always be equal. Therefore, example number 3 is an identity equation. Number 4, we have sine theta second theta is equal to tangent theta. Now, take note that if we have sine theta, take note second theta is 1 over cosine theta. Take note tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. If we multiply sine theta and uh, 1 over cosine theta, we will also have sine theta over cosine theta, which will be equal to tangent theta or that sine theta over cosine theta, which will make the left and the right side of our equa equation true. So, number 4 will also be an identity equation because for all instances the left and the right side of our equation is always true so take note it is an identity equation if for all values of the variable in the domain of the equation is true but if in only some of the cases the equation will be true then it is called a conditional equation now, let's proceed to the fundamental trigonometric identities. Now, for fundamental trigonometric identities, take note that if you have a point P, which has coordinates x, y, be the terminal point on the circle with respect to theta, and R as our radius, then we have sine theta will be equal to y over R, cosine theta will be x over R, Cosecant theta will be r over y, second theta will be r over x, tangent theta will be y over x, and cotangent theta will be x over y. The reciprocal identities are the following. Sine theta will be equal to 1 over cosecant theta. Cos, uh, cosine theta will be equal to 1 over second theta. Tangent theta will be equal to 1 over cotangent theta. And cosecant theta will be equal to 1 over sine theta, second theta will be equal to 1 over cosine theta, and cotangent theta will be equal to 1 over tangent theta. You call this reciprocal identities because your uh, one, one, uh, ident one identity or one uh, function will be the reciprocal of the other. Next, we have quotient identities. We have tangent theta will be equal to sine theta over cosine theta and cotangent theta will be equal to cosine theta over sine theta. So you call this quotient identities because you're simply dividing two other uh, trigonometric functions. Next, we have the Pythagorean identities. Okay, one, uh, the square of 
two uh, identities is equal to another or is equal to one. So we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta that will be equal to one. Tangent squared theta plus one is equal to second squared theta. We have cotangent squared theta plus one is equal to cosecond squared theta. And the last set of identities is the even odd identities. So if you have sine negative theta, that will be equal to negative sine theta. Cosine negative theta, that's equal to cosine theta. And we have tangent negative theta, that will be equal to negative tangent theta. So how do we use this fundamental trigonometric identities? Now we have here some examples. So first example, we will find the other trigonometric function values of theta if tangent theta equals 3 fourths and sine theta is less than 0. And second example, we will find the other trigonometric function values of theta if sine theta equals 1 third and tangent theta is less than 0. Okay, let's have the first example. So we will find the other trigonometric function values of theta given that tangent theta is 3 fourths and sine theta is less than 0. So we are, all, we are already given tangent theta, so we will find uh, cotangent theta, second theta, cosecond theta, sine and cosine theta. So first things first, the easiest one that we could solve is using the uh, reciprocal identity. Okay, so the reciprocal identity of tangent theta is, we have cotangent theta. So cotangent theta is equal to 1 over tangent theta. So we already have the value of tangent theta, which is, uh, which is 3 fourths. So we simply get the reciprocal of 3 fourths, so that is 4 thirds. So cotangent theta is now 4 thirds. Now let's think of uh, other other trigonometric function values. What we could do is to use the uh, we could we have already used the reciprocal. We could also now use the uh, Pythagorean identities. So for Pythagorean identities, if you could still recall, we could use tangent and cotangent because we already have this two. So Take note that cosecant squared theta is equal to cotangent squared theta plus 1. So that is a, a Pythagorean identity. So to get cosecant squared theta, we will use uh, what we have solved now for cotangent theta. So cosecant squared theta will be equal to cotangent is 4 thirds. So that's, that is now 4 thirds squared plus 1. So simplify. 4 thirds squared is 16 over 9 plus 1. So 16 over 9 plus 1, that is, take note, 16 over 9, and you have plus 1 here. Take note, the plus 1 will be 9 over 9. So 16 over 9 plus 9 over 9, that will give you 25 over 9. So cosecant squared theta is 25 over 9. So to get cosecant, we extract the square root of both sides of our equation. So that will be cosecant theta will be equal to square root of 25 over 9. So that is 5 thirds. However, take note that sine theta must be less than 0. So which implies that uh, cosecant theta will also be negative. Take note for sine at uh, if sine theta is less than zero, that would mean okay, take note if we have sine theta. Take note sine theta is equal to y over r. Now r could not be negative since it is a length or a magnitude. So for sine theta to be negative, y must be negative. Since y is negative here, then we could it also implies that cosecant theta is negative. Since, since cosecant is simply the reciprocal of sine. So 
cosecant must be negative 5 thirds. Okay, so because sine is negative, cosecant is also negative. Next, we could also use the uh, Pythagorean identity to solve for second squared, uh, second squared theta. So, second squared theta is equal to tangent squared theta plus 1. So, since we already have the value for tangent, so we could have second squared theta is equal to 3 fourths squared because tangent theta is 3 fourths plus 1. So, 3 fourths squared is simply 9 over 16 plus 1. So, 9 over 16, uh, take note, 1 here could be expressed as 16 over 16. Okay, so 9 over 16 plus 16 over 16, that will give you 25 over 16. So since we have here second squared and we only want to find second theta, we have to extract the square root of both sides of the equation. So that's second theta. Uh, theta is equal to the square root of 25 over 16. So, square root is 5 fourths. So, since again, since sine is uh, less than 0, second theta is negative 5 fourths. Okay, next. We now have cotangent, cosecant, and secant. So, we could now find the value of cosine theta. So, cosine theta is 1 over second theta. Okay, so that's 1 over second theta. So, simply get the reciprocal of second. So, that is negative 4 fifths. Okay, next. Sine theta is simply the reciprocal of cosecant theta. So that is negative 3 fifths. So we now have the values of all the trigonometric functions. So cotangent theta is 4 thirds, cosecant theta is negative 5 thirds, second theta is negative 5 fourths, cosine theta is negative 4 fifths, and uh, this is sine. So this is sine theta. So sine theta is negative 3 fifths. Okay, next example, we will find the other trigonometric function values of theta given that sine theta is 1 third and tangent theta is less than 0. So, again, the easiest way to find one trigonometric function value is using the reciprocal identity. So, sine theta is one-third, so we could have the reciprocal, which is cosecant theta. So, cosecant theta is simply one over sine theta, so that is the reciprocal of one-third, or that is three. Next, could have okay okay we have first sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 so using the Pythagorean uh, identities we have cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So that will give you cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared, that is 1 third squared. So we have cosine, cosine theta will now be 1 minus 1 third squared, or that is 1 minus 1 ninth. So that will give you cosine squared theta is equal to 8 over 9. So we only have 
to find cosine theta, so get the square root of both sides of our equation. So that will be square root of 8 over 9. So to get the square root, we have to get the square root of the numerator and the denominator. Square root of 8 is 2 square root of 2, while square root of 9 is 3. So cosine is 2 square root of 2 over 3. So however, since tangent is less than 0, that would mean that either sine or cosine would be negative. Since sine is positive, that would mean that our cosine is negative. So cosine theta is negative 2 square root of 2 over 3. Now let's discuss second theta. Second theta is simply the reciprocal of 1 over cosine. So since we already have the value for cosine here, which is negative 2 square root of 2 over 3, we can say that second the, uh, theta is simply the reciprocal, which is negative 3 square root or negative 3 over 2 square root of 2. So to rationalize, we simply multiply simply multiply square root of 2 over 2 to both the numerator and the denominator. So that will be negative 3 times square root of 2, that's 3 square root of 2. 2 square root of 2 times square root of 2, that will be 2 times square root of 4. So square root of 4 is 2, so that will be 2 times 2, which will give you 4. So that's why second theta will be negative 3 over square root of 2 or negative 3 square root of 2 over 4. Okay, next. Okay, next we have tangent theta since we already have the value of both sine and cosine. So tangent theta, using our quotient identity, is simply sine theta over cosine theta. So we divide 1 third divided by 2 square root of 2 or negative 2 square root of 2 over 3. So to divide both fractions, we will copy the numerator and multiply it to the reciprocal of the denominator. So that's 1 third times negative 3 over 2 square root of 2. So, we cancel out 3. Take note, the 3 in 1 third here, and the 3 here, could be cancelled out. So, that's why you have negative 1 over 2 square root of 2. Or, if you rationalize this, you multiply this by 2 square root or square root of 2 over square root of 2. Okay, that will give us negative square root of 2 over 2 times square root of 4. Or, this is square root of 2 over 2 times square root of 4 is 2. So, that is negative square root of 2 over 4. And lastly, okay, we have cotangent theta that is simply the reciprocal of 1 or that's the reciprocal of tangent theta or that's 1 over tangent theta. So we simply get the reciprocal. So that will be, okay, that will be negative 2 square root of 2. Okay. So, that is all for this lesson. So, see you next lesson. Bye-bye.